At the start of the movie, we see a house located in the middle of a forest. Inside, an eight-year-old boy named Roscoe is engaged in sketching images of demons. This is because he frequently sees a demon called Dimvos, which fascinates him and inspires his drawings. Occasionally, Dimvos arrives in his bedroom and watches him draw, while also providing feedback on the artwork. However, he does not pose any threat to the boy, despite his demonic nature. Roscoe has a best friend named named Eva, and they often play hide and seek together. Since they are neighbors, their parents are close friends as well. One day, as Roscoe is with his mother, he tells her that the demon visited him once again last night, and they had a good time together. However, the mom doesn't take his words seriously, thinking that Roscoe is just imagining things. At night, as the boy is in his room, drawing devil sketches as usual, he is startled by a loud sound. Worried, he goes to his parents' room to check, only to find out that they have been burnt to ashes. This sends the little boy into a state of panic, and he starts running around the house. Out of nowhere, Dimbos confronts him, and Roscoe demands an explanation. However, the demon doesn't say anything, and simply leads the innocent Roscoe outside the house, and into a mysterious hole. The scene then shifts to 20 years later, where some construction workers are building a house in the middle of a forest. We see that it's an isolated location with no settlements nearby. At the same time, on the other side of the forest, an adult Roscoe emerges from the cave that he had entered 20 years ago. He then rushes towards the bushes at breakneck speed, as if he's running away from something dangerous. After a while, he comes across the location where the construction employees are working. While the workers are busy with their job, Roscoe steals one of their bags and discovers a pair of jeans inside. He then wears those jeans and runs back to the place he used to live, which is now completely deserted. Huh, he wasn't running away from anything. He just didn't want anyone to see his demon dong. That evening, after a day of hard work, the construction workers gather around to relax and enjoy some drinks together. The group is having a good time until they are approached by a deadly demon named Ogrum. The sight sends shivers down everyone's spines, but before they can even react, Ogrum lets out a devilish scream, causing all the workers to collapse in pain. Following this, Ogrum approaches a guy and turns him into a demon using magic. He then instructs the guy to kill all of his friends. Obeying the command, the man approaches his own friends and starts eating them one by one. In another part of the forest, as some friends are enjoying a campfire, they are approached by another frightening demon named Valurga. He immediately casts a spell and hypnotizes everyone present. The spell is so powerful that the friends start killing each other mercilessly. Following this, we see a different demon named Rolmortis, who arrives at a cemetery. He menacingly starts shouting at the graves telling them it's time to wake up and rule the world. Within a few minutes, the dead start awakening, and he gathers a large army of zombies. Rolmortis then points them in a specific direction and orders them to go there. The next morning, we see a grown-up Eva spending some quality time with her dad at home. Turns out they are still living near the same forest. After a while, the father gets up and leaves the house, saying he needs to work in the field. However, unbeknownst to him, the horde of zombies have surrounded their house. When the father finally realizes their presence, it is too late, as the zombies surround him and brutally devour him alive. In the meantime, Eva hears her father screaming and becomes startled. She rushes outside to investigate, only to see the gruesome sight of her father being dismembered, filled with rage. Eva quickly pulls out a gun and eliminates all the zombies present. However, to her horror, more zombies show up and start chasing her. Fortunately, she manages to get to her father's car and hastily drives drives away from there. In the next scene, as Roscoe is strolling around the forest, he stumbles upon Eva's car by chance. Recognizing the vehicle, he deduces that the girl is Eva, so he calls out her name. The latter is shocked to meet her best friend after two decades apart, and they celebrate their emotional reunion briefly. After this, Roscoe enters Eva's car, and the two of them drive to his old house. Once they arrive, Eva asks Roscoe where he had been for the last 20 years, and he begins telling 
telling her the story, the scene shifts back to 20 years ago, revealing how a young Roscoe descended into a mysterious hole after being summoned by Dimvos. It turns out the hole leads to an alternate dimension known as the Dark Womb. In other words, it's the place where all demons live. Dimvos takes on the role of Roscoe's mentor and teaches him black magic. The little boy also doesn't object as he considers Dimvos a friend, but whenever he talks about returning home, the demon insists that this is his new home and that there's nothing for him in the outside world. One day, Dimvos informs Roscoe that there are many malicious demons in this realm that intend to harm people and rule the world. He then shows the boy three jars which imprison the three most fearsome demons, Ogrim, Valurga, and Rolmortis. Dimvos further reveals that he is a member of an ancient race of demons that guards the universe, but since he is getting old, he wants Roscoe to take on his role and become the new protector of the vessels. Years pass by, and we see that Roscoe has grown up and become an adult. Believing that the boy is now prepared, Dimbos uses magic and transmits his powers to him. As soon as Roscoe inherits these powers, he has a vision of his past, where he witnesses the tragic death of his parents. The killer was none other than Dimbos. Enraged, Roscoe approaches the demon and asks why he did all of this. In response, Dimbos explains that he reluctantly murdered the parents, as that was the only way to lure Roscoe inside the hole. Dimbos explains that after he's gone, he wants Roscoe to take his place and protect these vessels so that the world might be saved. However, Roscoe isn't convinced by this reasoning, and he angrily declares that he doesn't care about Dimbos or his vessels. Then, using his powers, he breaks the vessels, releasing the three dangerous demons. As soon as they break free, the first thing they do is kill Dimvos. Witnessing this, Roscoe becomes scared and realizes that he has made a big mistake. He then rushes out of the hole, and following him, the three demons also arrive in the forest. Back in the present, Eva is shocked by the story, and she scolds Roscoe for causing such havoc and bringing the demons here. She also accuses him of being responsible for her father's death and begins hitting him. After that, she breaks down in tears, remembering her father, and Roscoe consoles her by claiming that he did not cause this on purpose. In the meantime, we see two hunters going through the forest in search of prey. One of them suddenly hears odd noises in the distance, and upon checking, he spots the demon Valurga eating a girl. Valurga also notices the hunter and quickly hypnotizes him. Following this, the hunter, who is now fully controlled by the demon, pulls out his crossbow and mercilessly kills his friend. Not far away, two girls are seen passing along the forest road, unaware that zombies are following them. After a while, they come across the hunter from earlier, wandering in the woods alone. Assuming that he needs help, the girls get out of the car and call out to him, but he suddenly turns around and shoots one of them with an arrow. Seeing this, the other girl is horrified and starts screaming, but the hunter shoots her as well. She gets injured in the leg and cannot walk anymore. Unfortunately, a group of zombies arrive at the scene and devour her alive. That evening, a group of friends are having a house party when Ogrim suddenly appears. Without wasting any time, he casts a deadly spell on them, causing them to die one after another. He then hypnotizes the girls into being naked. <laughs> and eventually kills them as well. As all of this is happening, Roscoe and Eva also stumble outside the same house. Using his powers, Roscoe detects that a demon is nearby, so he cautiously makes his way to the house. When he spots Ogrim near the dead bodies, Roscoe decides that it's time to put an end to all of this. So, using every last bit of his power, he unleashes a brutal attack on Ogrim that eventually kills him. Elsewhere, the other two demons sense Ogrim's death and decide to head in that direction. In the next scene, Roscoe returns home with Eva, only to discover that Valurga is already there. The demon strikes Roscoe, but our hero successfully counterattacks and injures him. However, he soon realizes that it is not Valurga, but a regular guy. It is the same construction worker from earlier in the movie, who is hypnotized by Ogrim. Feeling guilty, Roscoe uses his magic to resurrect the man, who soon heals and awakens. Why didn't he do that for Eva's dad? Following this, Roscoe 
Mexico tells the guy that from now on, he must only kill demons and not regular people. The guy obliges without any hesitation, and he rushes to the cemetery, where he eliminates all the zombies one by one. Sometime later, he encounters Roll Mortis, the leader of the zombies. The guy heroically takes out one of his horns and also crushes his eyes. After a fierce struggle, he eventually prevails and manages to kill Roll Mortis. That's right, a resurrected construction worker killed one of the most powerful demons in history. The following morning, as Roscoe and Diva are walking through the forest, they come across Valurga, the final and the most powerful demon. Roscoe tries to kill him using his best abilities, but the demon is so strong that he doesn't even budge. While Roscoe chants his spells, the demon starts laughing maniacally. Eventually, he unleashes his powers and finishes off Roscoe and Eva in an instant. In the aftermath, Falurga is delighted that he can finally rule the world now. However, as he proceeds to walk away, the guy Roscoe had saved earlier arrives out of nowhere and attacks him. Falurga is badly caught off guard by this, and before he can use his powers, the guy rips out his heart and kills him once and for all. The movie concludes with the ordinary construction guy as the sole survivor. He wanders through the forest, screaming like a maniac. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.